Hi there, I'm Jack Wright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. As the saying goes, you know I have to repeat this every time. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. You can share the content. You can subscribe if you want to see more of me and you can uh, comment. Yeah, those are the main things that you need to do. I'm Black Bright. I talk about different topics. Most of the topics I talk about, I hope you find useful. Um, sometimes it's about legislation. Sometimes it's things that are in the news. But whatever it is, I really share to inform. Now, I don't aim at a particular audience, which might be my downfall. But I think the consistent trend in what I do is sharing information that can help someone at least. So today I wanted to talk about dogs of all things. I don't, I'm not a pet owner. I don't own a dog, but there's legislations about dogs that I didn't know about that even if you don't own a dog, you should know about so you can help be a citizen enforcer. And it's for those of people who own dogs and do not know the legislation behind dogs. A lot of young people want dogs and especially coming out of COVID, especially for those who live alone, dog has become a man and woman's best friend. And because of that, some people jump into buying a dog and do not realise the actual expense. They think, oh, I bought a dog. I know about that it's got to be vaccinated. I know it's got to have a tag. I know you there's certain things you can't do. You can't snip its tail for cosmetic purposes. You can't snip its ears and that kind of thing. So most people know that when they buy a dog, it's going to cost them the food, probably a couple of vaccinations, and that's what they believe is the sum total. Dogs can cost anywhere between twenty five and thirty thousand for the dog's lifetime. Anyway, I'm not here to talk about the price of dogs because I don't want anybody to kind of be put off buying a dog. But it is a big responsibility. Owning a dog is a big responsibility. So um, I thought, well, when I say it's a responsibility, it's a responsibility for the owner. It's a responsibility to protect. Um, protect the public, children, and there's lots of different things involved. So I thought I would do this video um, and I'll have to read some of it because like I said, I'm not a pet owner. I decided to research some of the information last night. I got a bit tired, so I decided not to do the video last night. But yeah, so while the prospect of owning a new dog is exciting, they are surprisingly expensive. Upfront costs can cost anywhere between £730 to £1,595. And that's, of course, depending on the dog and whether or not you want to splurge out on essentials. Like you can get, you know, the basic little tag for maybe $10, $15, or you might want something fancy that might cost you 50 bucks. That's 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 where the discrepancy comes in. Um, and, of course, that's 730 and £1. 595 does not include the price of the dog. So you could spend between 1000 and 2500 every year. So when I'm talking about the lifetime, as I said earlier, 20, 30,000, that's the lifetime of the, year, the dog, depending on how long it lives. Um, and they say that's the minimum you can expect to pay for your dog for their ongoing care, routine vet visits and stuff like that. And that doesn't include if your dog becomes ill, so, or develops health problems. So it's cheaper to buy a rescue dog. Adoption fees are between 135 and 200 and usually includes neutering, microchipping and vaccinations. If you choose to buy a dog from a breeder, which is the only alternative to buy a dog, you can't buy a dog on the street. You can't buy a dog from your neighbour and you can't, and this applies to cats as well, you can't buy a dog like in a market. I used to think that you could just pick up a dog or a dog or a cat anywhere, but you can't. You can't even buy a dog from a pet shop. It has to be 
from a registered breeder or like the RSPCA or PDSA. Those are only places you can buy a dog from. If somebody is selling you a dog on the street or online, then there it's illegal. It's actually illegal. So don't go online thinking, oh, I'm going to get myself a dog because you won't be able to verify at that point whether or not it's a registered breeder, whether the breeder has been licensed and whether the dog is what they say it is. So you need to have the pet certificate. You need to have pet passport if, it, if they say it's born outside the country because sometimes dogs outside the country can be more alluring. But does it have a pet passport? Does it have vet, a veterinary um, certificate? These are the key things you need to know before buying a dog. So, vaccinations are around 100 to 150. Flea and tick prevention can cost anywhere between 5 and 15 pounds. And although these costs won't apply to every new dog owner, I'm mentioning them just in case um just in case so we've got adoption fees initial course of vaccination heartworm prevention flea and worm treatments neutering a bed for your dog a lead collar a tag lead collar and tag food and water bowls i mean you might say oh well i can give it a bowl and anything but this is this is just general things that you're going to need that you might not think of when you're buying a dog Toothbrush, toothpaste, because they have their own types of toothbrushes and toothpaste. And treats for training. I mean, you're going to want to teach a dog where to poo and stuff like that. So you need to offer them treats. So that comes into the expense. A car restraint, if you have a car. If you don't have a car, you won't need it. Um, yearly health checks. And poo bags. You need those poo bags because if you don't pick up your, after your dog, it can cost you anywhere between 100 and and £1,000 if somebody chooses to report you. You might say, oh, how are they going to know where I live or who I am? You know what? The power of this new ca these cameras that we have on our phones, you don't know who's recording and you don't know who's following you and blah, 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 or why. So, poo bags, dog shampoo, brushes, um, dental chews for their teeth. You've got to pay for teeth cleaning. You might say, I might clean them myself. Well, that's your option. Grooming. You might groom the dog yourself. But like I said, these are things you might not think about. Dog food. Of course, you're going to think about dog food. But dog food can cost you anywhere between 50 to 190 pounds a year for dog food. Um, stain odor remover. Dogs can make your house smell a bit smelly and a bit stuffy. So depending up to you whether or not you want to breeze it out and um, potty pads so and of course pet insurance pet insurance is the most um, worthwhile investment if you've got a dog or any kind of pet because once they go sick it can cost you mega bucks it's like it's worse than well it's more expensive than having a child or having a hobby People think, oh, yeah, I want a dog for a companion. And they don't think about all of these expenses. But yes, if if you have a pet, it's really wise to take out pet insurance, especially if you buy a, a dog or, or a cat um, from a rescue service. I, my next door neighbour, they bought a cat from a rescue service. And that poor cat. Um, it's developed diabetes, it's um, had an accident, broke one of its legs, and all sorts of ha things have happened to it. It's actually sitting on my shed roof at the moment. It's just sitting there. And it's it's so heartbreaking when I'm watching it walk with a limp. You know, it's kind of lost its bizarre. So you just don't know. All I'm saying is, I'm not saying that rescue services say you've done cats or dogs you just don't know what a pet is going to develop what health problems they're going to develop so you do need pet insurance that's all I'm saying so like I said do not buy a dog online from the on the street a neighbor in the market in a pet shop or in any public place it's illegal so where do you buy it from well you buy it from a uh, 
reputable breeder who can show you their license and qualifications. And like I said, if you are buying um, a, a pet online, I'm not saying you can't buy a pet online, but as long as you go and physically pick up the pet, make sure it's had a vet check, check whether or not whether or not it's had vaccinations and all that kind of stuff, whether it's been neutered and all that kind of stuff. First, before you part with any money, don't be paying no deposits. Just go with a view of having some interest. You want to see this, the, how the, the, the dog has been kept. Is it being groomed? Has it, does it look well looked after? Does it look in its eyes? Are they yellow? You know, little things that you might not think of straight away. Oh, great, I'm getting a dog. I'm getting a dash hound. I'm getting a little cutie chihuahua. You know what I mean? It sounds beautiful in principle for some people, but there could be repercussions if you don't do your research. So, um, so this video, like I said, it offers some tips. Um, only buy from reputable suppliers such as the Kennel Club Assured Breeder. There, so there's, I guess, when you're going to buy these dogs, it should have some kind of sign on there website or on their establishment that they are a kennel club assured breeder you can get advice from the dog advisory council the dogs trust the kennel club paag and the rspca and make sure you get all the documenting all the documentation like i said beforehand registration license that kind of stuff uh, if it was born outside the UK, ask for the pet passport or a veterinary certificate and ask to see license details for commercial dog breeders. This just protects people who are so excited, especially young people and parents who just want to get a dog because they feel their children have been deprived, whether it's through COVID, whether it's because they're, they have some kind of health problem or a disability. And some parents just want to get a, a pet for their children just because. So this video is really just to help those who really have taken on a pet and haven't really seriously thought about the responsibility and what they're accountable for by having a pet. So there's 20 laws that dog owners must follow. I call them laws, uh, kind of bylaws, legislation recommendations but the majority of them are laws so there's three main legislations governing the protection of dogs and i'm only talking about dogs today but it also applies to cats and other pets um animal the animal welfare act 2006 where most of the legislation i'm going to be talking about today comes from the animal welfare licensing of activities involving animals england regulations 2018 and the Animal Welfare Sentencing Act 2021. So um, I thought I would share because 12.9 million owned a dog in 2020 according to Sustista.com but according to pdsa.org.uk 26% of adults have a dog, which translates into 9.6 million in 2021. That's quite a big disparity from 12.9 million to 9.6 million. Um, is it because less people are buying dogs? Or I'm not sure. Or what, what constitutes their figures? So owners of dogs could be taken to court if they don't look after their dogs properly could face a prison sentence of 51 weeks or a fine of up to 20,000. So it's almost like if you don't look after humans properly, you know, fines and it's just the same. Having a dog is like having a human, like a baby. You have to know how to look after it properly. It's welfare, it's environment, the food it eats, it's diet, all those kind of things. You don't just get a dog and, you know, pat it up and make it look pretty and don't do the necessary. So under the Dangerous Dogs Act 1991, 
It outlaws four types of dogs, and that's the Pit Bull Terrier, the Japanese Toza, Dogo Argentino, and the Fila Brasilia, Brasileiro. So it's, Ill it's illegal to own, sell, breed, give away, or abandon these types of dogs. So if somebody's coming to you and saying, well, look, I've got this wicked Pit Bull Terrier of a Japanese Toza, and I'm only selling it for 500. And I mean, you know that those dogs go for like two or three grand. You have to say no, because they're illegal to own. And you could be throwing away your money if somebody catches you with one. And or the police see you with one and they're just going to confiscate it. And you could get a fine anyway. So those dogs, Pitbull Terrier, Japanese Toza, Dogo Argentina and Fila. Brasileira. Don't buy those dogs. Don't sell them. If you get one, don't abandon it. It's illegal. Worse if you try to breed them. So a dog must be kept in a suitable environment. What is a suitable environment? You tell me. I mean, it should be more pacific, but I would assume that a suitable environment is somewhere that's clean, somewhere where he's got space, who will have his daily exercises and all that kind of stuff. He must be kept on a suitable diet. What's suitable for one person might not be suitable for another. So that's relative as well. If a dog is not used to being left, being left alone, it can develop separation anxiety. So you can't just all of a sudden leave your dog alone. It's a bit like a child. When you leave a child alone for the first time, they develop um, separation anxiety. The same with dogs. People think animals don't have senses or don't have um, feelings, but they're very sensitive creatures and you have to treat them almost like they're human. Um, and what separation anxiety does, it makes them want to pee um, very often. So if you've got left your dog in the house um, too long, then, you know, it might come back to a smelly place. Also, if you leave your dog too long and it starts barking down the place and it's like for two, three, four hours, you can, it's actually an offence. So somebody could report your dog barking incessantly because it's disturbing their peaceful enjoyment. And that's actually an offence. I didn't know that because sometimes I listen to these bloody dogs howling all the night. I never knew that it was illegal. For me, I wouldn't know whose dog it is, but the fact of the matter is, is that, yes, if a dog is um, barking incessantly because it's been left in the house alone, it's a fence and you can report the owner. OK, um, they reckon it's possible to leave less active dogs at home alone for up to eight to ten hours. That's the Basset Hound, Chihuahua. French Bulldog, Greyhound, Maltese, Sharpe and Whippet dogs. So those are kind of dogs, if you do need to go to work all day, they're probably the best dogs to have. Um, they ha Or dogs with small bladders. And they shouldn't be left alone for more than four hours. See? I didn't know all of this. And for some people who are not interested in animals or dogs, they might think, oh, what the hell? Why do I need to know this? But like I said, when you know um, legislation like to do with dogs, you can actually help to protect the dog and help it to be, and help protect yourself. Because if you know that certain things are not permitted, you can actually help enforce that. So um, dogs should be protected from pain and suffering, including tail docking. It's illegal. Removing the tail for cosmetic purposes. You have these people now who have these dogs and they put all these frilly things in, they chip their ears and they cut off their tail to, as a, a fashion statement. It's illegal. Um, electric collars used for training dogs, they've been banned because it's considered cruel. And ear cropping, like I said, you can't be cropping your, your, your dog's ears because you want it to stand up or look a certain way. Under the Control of Dogs Order, 1992, dogs must wear a collar in public, also known as tagging, that displays the owner's name and address, including postcode, telephone number is optional, and the name of the dog. 
Under the microchipping law, April 2016, all dogs and puppies must be microchipped and registered by the age of eight weeks. It only cost, it cost about 15 to 20 quid. If a local authority finds a dog that is not microchipped, it will need to be microchipped within 21 days or the owner will face a fine of £500. Allowing dogs to be out of control is illegal, whether they were out of control in the home, um, outside the home, i.e. in public or on someone else's property. It carries a fine of £5,000. If your dog attacks livestock, it carries a fine of £1,000. Owners can be prosecuted if a dog attacks someone in their home, including if they attack it in their front or back gardens or on private property such as pups. So anywhere you know, a dog attacks another human being, the owner can be prosecuted. Dogs left alone, at home alone, and are incessantly barking, like I said, interfering with the quiet enjoyment of neighbours, is an offence in some localities. The local authorities' environmental programme can formally ask you to stop your dog from continuing the behaviour, although I don't know how, or take the dog away from you. Dog mess. That's the worst part, I think of having a dog oh i cannot imagine scooping up their poo and some of it is so runny Ooh. anyway how many times have you seen dogs poo and owners turn the other way take photos you can you can report it not sure how you get the name of the owners but there is a hundred pound to a thousand pound fine for not clean, cleaning up your dog's poo i mean most people do I think they've got into the habit of it and they see it as one of the responsibilities of owning a dog, but you still have those ones who just turn their head the other way and walk off and leave poo in the grass. And it's such a shame because you're supposed, when you see a nice large piece of green, you should be able to lie on the grass, walk on the grass, you know, have kids running around. But I do remember the day when everywhere you went, you saw dog poo. Oh, it was awful. He was always dodging dog poo. So it's very, it's very much improved. It's not as bad as it, well, it's not even half as bad as it used to be. Okay, so we've got responsible dog owners who do clean up their poo. So dogs must have a lead, especially in public, parks and where children are. Um, you need a license to breed dogs for cost anywhere between 150 to 500, depending on the establishment or how many dogs you breed. And especially if you run a business that breeds three or more litters of puppies a year, sells puppies or advertises dogs for sale. Lucy's Law bans third party sale of puppies and kittens in England. And that's what I was talking about. You can't buy pet um, dogs or cats in pet shops anymore or on the street, or from neighbours, or anything like that. It's illegal for commercial dealers to sell puppies and kittens unless they have been, unless they have bred the animals themselves. Let the buyer beware, as buyers have no automatic right to return a dog and request a refund. It's illegal to sell a puppy under eight weeks old. It is illegal to sell pets in the streets, in pet shops, at markets or public places. I have said that before. You don't need a license for dog walking, but there might be some bylaws you need to be aware of. So speak to your local council if you want to be a professional dog walker. Usually no more than four dogs should be walked at any one time. I say usually, but no more than four dogs anyway. Um, so it's not usually there are no more than four dogs. Um, and each dog must be on a lead and you must follow the professional dog walkers guidelines, which can be obtained from www.dogtrust.org.uk. You could be fined up to £100 if you're, if you're caught walking more than four dogs. Dog walking businesses may need a license, but it's at the local council's discretion. Dog sitters, dog boarders, you don't need any kennels or cages. You just have to make sure that the dog is kept in a safe place, the place is clean, the um, owners or the boarders are dog friendly. So, you know, a lot of people would do this to make money. 
you know, set up their homes and say, okay, I look after your dog while you go away on holiday for six weeks. You have to make sure that the, the people who do this yeah. like dogs and it's not an excuse just to make money and they don't feed the dog properly. You end up coming back to a totally different dog that's aggressive and is not happy. So puppies are usually vaccinated from the age of 12 weeks. It will cost £60 approximately. Second and third shops probably cheaper. Unvaccinated dogs should be restricted from other dogs to avoid spreading infections. But how do you know a dog has been unvaccinated? When you allow, mind you, you don't see dogs interfering with other dogs so much these days. But you wouldn't really know if another dog's been unvaccinated. It's not like if your dog runs up to another dog, you're going to say to the owner, has your dog been vaccinated? And then pull your dog back because after then, after by that time, your dog has already interfered with the unvaccinated dog. So I'm not quite sure how that works. But unvaccinated dogs should be restricted from other dogs to avoid spreading infections. The annual booster vaccinations for leptospirosis and kennel cough are not mandatory but recommended every year. Boosters for distemper, parvovirus, parvovirus and canine hepatitis every three years are mandatory, especially if you take your dog abroad. However, what is optional in the UK may be mandatory in other countries. And last but not least, people who buy a dog or want to own a dog must be at least 16 years old. And that's all for now. I hope that's of interest to somebody. Bye-bye.